not necessary. I like to have a conclusion just because it feels weird to just end an essay without a conclusion. Uh, but there's nothing in the TOEFL literature and ETS's literature that says you need it. Um, and students do fine without it. I just include it. All right, everybody, let's practice some integrated writing. We're going to look at two questions and we're going to look at two sample essays. And I'm going to talk about the essays and give my feedback on them. There'll be one essay that is kind of like a perfect score. And then there's one essay that's a student sample that I will go over at the end. So make sure you stick around to the end because you'll learn about some common mistakes that students make for the integrated writing. So we're going to look at two questions and I'm going to give you time just like on test day. So you'll have to read the passage for three minutes, listen to a lecture about a similar topic, about the same topic, and then you write your essay. And after that, we'll talk about it. Also, I'm going to show you how to grade your writing, even if you don't have a teacher. But I do highly recommend it because it's really hard to know if your writing is improving. The best way to do that is with a writing evaluation. So check out tstprep.com. I'm going to leave a coupon code here for 10% off a writing evaluation so you can get a teacher to tell you your strengths and your weaknesses and what you need to do to improve. So check that out, tstprep.com. But without further ado, let's get into some practice. Let's start with TOEFL writing question one, and this is gonna be about, well, let's see. What is it gonna be about? Here we go. Writing task one, directions. For this task, you will read a passage and listen to a lecture about an academic topic. You may take notes during this time. After the passages have finished, you will then be asked a question about them. After the question, you have 20 minutes to write your response. Effective responses are usually between 200 to 350 words. You may look at the reading passage and your notes as you write. Keep in mind that the question will not ask for your opinion. You have three minutes to read. You may begin reading now.
Now listen to part of a lecture on the same topic you just read about. Many of the areas of cleared land referred to in the reading were once part of rainforests, and this unique ecosystem is in danger of disappearing because of deforestation. Even though there might be some short-term benefits for us today, the author of the reading has not considered the long-term consequences of these reckless actions. In Brazil alone, nearly 60% of the rainforest has been cut for farming purposes. Even though it's true that the population is rising and there is a demand for more food, there are also alternative ways to farm that do not require such vast areas of land. Hydroponics, for example, is one farming technique that actually requires no soil at all. All the progress humanity has made in technology should not be focused on how to destroy more in less time, but on how to preserve what we have while looking at alternatives to outdated practices like traditional farming. Secondly, while it might be lucrative for a few people to make a lot of money on new residential developments, increases in short-term economic prosperity shouldn't be our main concern when considering whether or not to destroy an entire ecosystem. Deforestation displaces all the animals, insects, and plants that live in a forested area. And, more importantly, 28% of the world's oxygen is produced from rainforest ecosystems. That's right, so we cannot be so irresponsible to clear away huge areas of precious rainforest just to make more money. Finally, notice how the countries mentioned in the reading, Brazil, Thailand, and Indonesia, are all developing nations. The workers in the woodcutting industry are paid low wages to carry out dangerous jobs. The woodcutting business doesn't benefit the people, but the small group of business owners who organize these projects. Now, answer the question. Summarize the points made in the lecture being sure to explain how they cast doubt on the specific points made in the reading passage. You have 20 minutes to write. All right, so congratulations. Hopefully you spent 20 minutes actually writing this essay. So now we're gonna talk about it a bit. This is a writing rubric from ETS, the company that makes the TOEFL. Uh, it's not, in my opinion, it's not so helpful. So I just basically have these grading criteria for you to follow. Uh, this is just my own uh, that I use internally, up to you. But I look for organization, topic development. Organization is basically structure and templates. Topic development is being able to tell a story. Uh, and grammar, vocabulary, spelling and typos, format and word count, and appropriate content. Number seven is only for question one, what we're doing right now. And that's basically that you said everything from the reading and listening, all the important stuff. So that does hurt your score if you miss some important stuff from the reading and listening. Uh, you can download the TOEFL Writing Guide. It'll show you a kind of checklist so you can grade yourself. It also has templates and examples, it's got a lot of stuff, and it's all free. Download it at the uh, link in the description below. Should be the first one. So this is my own about the topic of deforestation. The part highlighted in yellow is the um, uh, template. Green is the reading passage and blue is the listening passage. So I basically just introduced the topic. The article introduces the topic of deforestation, which is the cleaning and cutting down of trees in a large area. Just a basic definition. The writer says there are many benefits to deforestation. Uh, the lecturer disagrees. He says deforestation has many consequences and attacks each of the claims. So the listening will always be a refutation, refutation if that's the right word, a uh, contrast of the reading passage, always. This is official from ETS. Okay, so I introduce it, go into the next paragraph, 
My, uh, by the way, my spelling and grammar are good. My topic development is good. Uh, I am going through the right structure. I start with the reading and then the listening, right? One thing you'll notice I think is one kind of mistake on my part here is that you should write more from the listening than the reading. Remember, when you actually do the writing, when it's time to write the 20 minutes you have, you can see the reading, which is why I put it up on the screen before. So uh, it's easier to include information from the reading. Uh, but the listening is, it comes and goes. You can't go back to it again to listen again. So you want to have probably two sentences from the listening and one sentence from the reading. Here I have two sentences from the reading and not a lot of information from the listening. Uh, okay, so I go through that and then the yellow part here is a template. I basically transition. I use the transition from reading to listening. The professor believes there are flaws in the author's position. He contends. So I'm trying to say other words besides he says or he states or he claims. I'm saying he contends. Again, you could download that guide. It has more synonyms. But yeah, you got to try to mix it up a bit, your vocabulary. Next body paragraph, according to the writer, clearing the areas also provides residential uh, for people. Let me move my face here. What does this say? Residential space for people to live and work in. A concern as the population continues to grow or to increase. The speaker, on the other hand, points out. Okay, so I added this kind of phrase, on the other hand, because it puts two commas there, which I think is a uh, good way to show complex grammar to show that you know a bit more complicated grammar. And then I write two sentences from the listing. So this is good. Very good. Okay. Hopefully you heard all this stuff from the listening passage. The next and last paragraph. Also the reading passage notes. So again, I'm trying, I'm saying the same thing, kind of the same structure each paragraph. So I have to find synonyms. I have to find ways to say the same thing a different way. I encourage you to make your own template. This is just an example. Uh, the yellow part, the professor rebuts this argument, you know, um, argues against it. Okay. And then I talk about it in more detail. That's it. Hopefully you get the idea. And the last, I get, I give a one sentence as the last paragraph. Um, you can have two sentences. You can have no conclusion paragraph. It's really up to you. Actually, it's not necessary. I like to have a conclusion just because it feels weird to just end an essay without a conclusion. Uh, but there's nothing in the TOEFL literature and ETS's literature that says you need it. Um, and students do fine without it. I just include it. And I'm repeating a lot of the stuff already. So uh, as you can see, the author and lecture hold very different views on, and then I say the topic, whatever it is. So that's the uh, perfect essay. You can use this and compare it. I want to show you kind of how to grade your own writing here. So this is my grading criteria, but you might be a bit confused. You might not be sure how to check that for yourself. So I made this kind of list of questions here uh, <clears throat> for you to ask yourself to help you grade your own writing. Again, you could go to TSD prep to get an evaluation, but this is some questions you can ask yourself. Did I write at least 250 words? You want to have at least that many words. Did I write an introduction and three well-developed body paragraphs? You need to have three body paragraphs because the passage will usually have three supporting reasons for their opinion in both the reading and listening. Did I have enough time to include a short conclusion? You don't have to do this, but it's something you can ask yourself and maybe try to include. Did I have less than 10 formatting or spelling errors? Remember, there's no spell check on the test. So since there's no spell check, it's your responsibility to make sure that you check your spelling, make sure you don't have too many typos or spelling mistakes. Make sure when you're practicing at home that you have spell check off. Don't have spell check on because on test day, no spell check. So get used to that.
Okay. And so that's another question you can ask yourself. Did I include two transitional words or phrases? So these are things like according to the passage, in my opinion, in conclusion. These are things that actually matter. Uh, you really do need to have these transitional phrases. Try to have two in each body paragraph. Did I include all of the essential, which is another way to say important, information from the reading and from the listening? Hopefully you did. Did I have three minutes to edit my essay? So you want to make sure you have time to check your essay, check for typos. So this is about time management. You want to practice uh, actually having the same amount of time, 20 minutes, at home. Because time is an issue for a lot of people, so you want to get used to it before you actually go take the test. Okay. And... I think there's one more question. Yeah, what can I do next to improve my writing? So you want to ask yourself those things. Okay, now let's get into the next essay. All right, let's practice this next one. Be sure to practice this and stay afterwards to see a real student sample of this. So I want you to see what a student did and some mistakes that they made. And I want to make sure that you avoid making those same mistakes. All right. Let's just practice though. Here we go. Writing task one, directions. For this task, you will read a passage and listen to a lecture about an academic topic. You may take notes during this time. After the passages have finished, you will then be asked a question about them. After the question, you have 20 minutes to write your response. Effective responses are usually between 200 to 350 words. You may look at the reading passage and your notes as you write. Keep in mind that the question will not ask for your opinion. You have three minutes to read. You may begin reading now.
Now listen to part of a lecture on the same topic you just read about. So look, the travels of Marco Polo is a travel log, kind of like a memoir. And we know from history that Polo compiled the story almost 20 years after the fact. So of course there are some inconsistencies. Believe it or not, however, there has been a growing body of evidence that suggests that much of what Polo said in his book is true, and certainly more accurate than the author gives him credit for. First of all, about Polo's relationship with Kublai Khan. True, there is no mention of the name Marco Polo in the records, but that is because his position in the Khan's government was mistranslated in the English version of the book. You see, the original Italian text says that Polo was only an ambassador for the Khan, which means he would go on trips to other lands and represent his interests. This was not a high-level position, since thousands of other individuals occupied the same station in Khan's government. It should come as no surprise that there is no mention of Polo because his job was not worthy of being noted in the historical records. Secondly, regarding the Great Wall. So it's important to remember that when Marco Polo traveled to Asia, it was after the Mongols had successfully invaded China. You see, the Great Wall was built to keep the Mongols out. The new Mongolian rulers had been in power for almost 50 years at the time of Polo's travels. So the wall would have been in a state of disrepair. These new rulers would have had no reason to fortify the wall or keep soldiers on it. So even if Polo had seen it, the wall may have looked interesting, but not noteworthy. Thirdly, Professor Francis Wood's account of Marco Polo's travels has been criticized just as much as Marco Polo's book. There's no evidence to support her claim that Polo ever visited libraries in Iran or Turkey. On top of that, some of the details in the travels of Marco Polo have been verified over the years. For example, Polo mentions a few dozen Nestorian churches in eastern China. These churches were actually found by archaeologists in 2012, thus confirming his story. It's important to note that no other surviving text from that time mentions the existence of these churches. Now, answer the question. Summarize the points made in the lecture, being sure to explain how they cast doubt on the specific points made in the reading passage. You have 20 minutes to write. Congratulations on finishing. Hopefully you set aside 20 minutes and actually wrote this essay. Now let's look at a student sample to see what were some common mistakes that you can avoid. And the first one is pretty simple, is that they have a lot of spelling mistakes. Now you can avoid this by just having time to edit and check your essay. Marchant instead of merchant. Tarvel instead of travel. Macro instead of Marco. These matter and they will hurt your score. This is too much. I put in your checklist to have no more than 10. You really want to get it down to five or less. You really want to have as few typos as possible. So that's spelling and typos. That's going to hurt the student's score. Another thing that's going to hurt the student's score, let me read uh, the first couple sentences here. This is the first body paragraph. First, the passage states that Macro, instead of Marco, big problem, keeps on saying macro, describes is spelled wrong, his close relationship with the king of this area. It discusses that instead of saying it, you want to say the passage. So there's a lot of mistakes, but I'm going to just focus on a few. Uh, the passage discusses that the position Macro states in his book he worked for is hardly to happen. So hard to understand here. It states that opinion because of it is hard to a foreigner to have a position in that empire instead of empire, especially he was a European person. And also, Macro's name is absent from the records of the leaders. So, you know, this is hard to kind of follow. Uh, what I put here is organization and topic development. Basically, you want to talk about this is from the reading and this is from the listening. Here, I don't know what's from the reading and what's from the listening. The, the, the student says here, the professor is against this opinion. So 
that's okay, but I don't know which professor. Is it the professor in the reading or the professor in the listening? So we have to be very clear here and say the listening passage. Uh, because even though this is part of the template, it will, it's not enough information here for me to know what's from the reading and what's from the listening. It's hard to follow this, which is really annoying as a grader, as an evaluator. So since it's hard to follow, it's going to really hurt your score. All right. And we have some, again, spelling and grammar problems here. Second, the passage, so it should be lowercase t, discusses that if Macro visited northern China, consequently he must have seen, instead of must see, the Great Wall of China. But Macro did not discuss, instead of discuss, any data about it. Data is the wrong word. The professor refutes this opinion. That's okay. Uh, I don't know why I highlighted this. I think that's a mistake. He says that when Macro visited this area, the Great Wall was at a bad situation. So we have a lot of grammar mistakes here. So that's a problem <laughs> that the student needs to work on. And, oh, that's why. So another thing is that the student uses a lot of the same vocabulary. States, states, disgust, disgust, book, book. So their uh, uh, vocabulary variety score is going to go down as well. So you need to find synonyms. I know you're kind of saying the same thing a lot. It's the same structure, but you'll have to find different ways to say the same thing. It's very important. So their vocabulary score is going to be, is going to hurt from this. Okay. So again, download the TOEFL writing guide. It's free to, uh, to download. So check that out. And also visit tsdprep.com for a writing evaluation, 10% off coupon code. I'll put a link in the description below here. And if you're ready to practice for question number two, we're going to do that one next. All right. So, I'll see you in question number two. Hope you found this helpful and good luck TOEFL takers. All right, see you next time.